Welcome back on this Tuesday as we wrap up chapter 14. We've spent a few days on this and we're going to continue to look at this, this section and understand a little bit more of what God is saying. This is wrapping up the section on spiritual gifts. It is also wrapping up the, uh, the larger section on gathering together in worship, starting all the way back, I believe, in chapter 10, uh, maybe even a little bit before that, and moving through here as he gives those instructions. The last few chapters have been spoke, focused on spiritual gift, this one especially on speaking in tongues and how, in a way, you get the idea that it was being overdone in the church and we pick this up again today as well. We're going to start reading verses uh, 26 through uh, the first part of 33. What then, brothers, when you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Let all things be done for building up. If any speak in a tongue, let there be only two or at most three, and each in turn, and let someone interpret but if there is no one to interpret, let each of them keep silent in church and speak to himself and to God. Let two or three prophets speak and let the others weigh what is said. If a revelation is made to another sitting there, let the first be silent. For you can all prophesy one by one so that all may learn and all be encouraged. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to prophets for God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. Again, when gathering together, and this gets an understanding of what they did when they gathered together, right? Everybody would perhaps bring something up. One would bring up a hymn, maybe a lesson that was read, a revelation, something that they thought of or that had come to them throughout the week, uh, or a tongue or an interpretation. But he says, don't do the tongues if there's not anybody to interpret. Again, this was a gift for the early church, not used much in this day and age, and needs to be careful when it is done. Because, as Paul says, unless someone is there to interpret, it's not as good. And this, the speaking in tongues, it seems to be more with prayer uh, and thanksgiving to God than other things. He mainly focuses on those who prophesy, letting it be done. Two or three prophets speak and others weigh what is said. Other, in other words, hold each other accountable, ask questions, speak, know that what is being said is right. And to be do all of this in good order, not chaos, which... If you think about how the Lord's Supper was done, you kind of get an idea that that's how this was done as well. It was one chaotic time of multiple people talking at one time, but the Lord says, uh, keep this um, not in chaos, not confusion, but of peace. For God is not a God of confusion, but a God of peace. And now, we're going to start with verse the last part of verse 33 and go through 35. This, again, is a very difficult passage to understand. We're going to try it here. As in all the churches of the saints, the women should keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but should be in submission, as the law also says. If there is anything they desire to learn, let them ask their husband at home, for it is shameful for a woman to speak in church. Here's, uh, again, these are very difficult words. Some said, well, it's cultural at that time, and there might be a little bit to it yet. It says in the last part of verse 33, as in all the churches of the saints. So, does that part, uh, as we look at it in the ESV, that applies to this section. Um, some might put it with the section before, God is not a God of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. That's how we should be. Um, or with this one, as the ESV does, with the women's keeping silent. Uh, is that a command for all? 
Now, we also need to remember the context that is being spoken, the context of the prophets speaking, um, the word of revelation, the discussion that is had. Um, I take it as being in that context. Perhaps some women were the main sources of confusion, maybe in their speaking of tongues or, or arguing with the, the prophecies, the prophets, or, or having some problems with that. We don't know what it is. But Paul says, it is shameful for a woman to speak in church. We keep take that speaking to be the proclaiming of the word of God. Again, I know this is a very difficult one to understand and to fully comprehend. Someday I'll do a lot more research on it and share more, but that's all I have for now. Let's wrap up with verses 36 through 40. Or was it from you that the word of God came? Or are you the only one it has reached? If anyone thinks that he is a prophet or spiritual, he should acknowledge that the things I am writing to you are a command of the Lord. If anyone does not recognize this, he is not recognized. So, my brothers, earnestly desire to prophesy and do not forbid speaking in tongues, but all things should be done decently and in order. Paul is, in a way, exerting his authority as the apostle, as the founder of the church there, giving them encouragement, people encouraging people to be those uh, the, the prophets there that speak the word of God, but setting the standard for the prophets, the standard of agreeing with the things that Paul has written. And again, he repeats his call for good order. All is done in good order and not chaos. God is not a God of chaos and confusion, but a God of peace and a God of order. We see that in his creation. That's all for chapter 14 as he wraps up this section on worship. Tomorrow we're starting chapter 15, a great chapter that focuses much on the revelation given to Paul specifically concerning the, the resurrection of the body. A great passage. Don't want to miss that. We'll see you on Wednesday.